everything moves, nothing rests, everything vibrates. This is the third hermetic principle of the universe as stated within one of the most profound occult texts known as the Kabbalion. So okay, cool, whatever, everything is buzzing around, who cares? The physics of vibration is one of the most powerful pieces of knowledge humanity has. As a truth of the universe, a truth far beyond occult and philosophical speculation, it means there is no such thing as stability in the universe. It means that you and I were never anything truly solid. We were always something that is constantly morphing and changing configuration. As we have discussed before, Nikola Tesla, inventor of alternating current, famously said, If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. The Kabbalion states, He who understands the principle of vibration has grasped the scepter of power. If we consider ourselves as particles moving through space, and we break the idea of space altogether, all we have left is movement or vibration, and this spooky realization has become a common understanding among physicists today, the understanding that space and time are emergent. They are simply ways the human mind measures, not what is being measured. Cognitive psychologist Donald Hoffman explains, if space-time is not fundamental reality, then neither are its contents, such as particles, neurons, and brains. They are useful data structures, nothing more. We are beings with parts that rapidly move in and out of reality. And this teleporting creates a buzzing or a frequency, and this frequency is a vibration. As Richard Feynman will explain, these vibrations are everywhere. So this big field, this, this area of irregular motions of this electric field, this vibration, contains this tremendous information, and it's all really there. That's what gets you. If you don't believe it, then you pick a piece of wire and connect it to a box, and in the wire the electrons will be pushed back and forth by this electric field, sloshing just at the right speed for a certain kind of long ways, and you turn some knobs on the box to get the sloshing just right, and you hear Radio Moscow. Though you know that it was there, how else did it get there? It was there all the time. It's only when you turn on the radio that it, you notice it. But that all these things are going through the room at the same time, which everybody knows when you, but you gotta stop and think about it to really get the pleasure about the complexity, the inconceivable <laughs> nature of nature. If we were to shine light on a wall, we can make a shadow puppet. The image we see is forever flickering, but we cannot see this flickering. And as we are made of the same energy, we flicker too. Sometimes parts of us flicker so much they teleport through themselves. This is called quantum tunneling. And no, it is not a theory, it is an observable reality of our universe. Its discovery helped the creation of the electron microscope. Electron microscopes rely on quantum tunneling or quantum teleportation to create accurate photos of atoms. This tunneling happens randomly across a surface material where a charge detector scans closely enough to encourage this tunneling, which creates the circuits required to plot an image. These effects would not be possible in a purely deterministic universe, as quantum tunneling is about as random a phenomenon as it gets as described by the Schrodinger equation. Sabine Hassenfelder, German theoretical physicist, explains this elegantly. Why do we not observe quantum effects in everyday life? Like, why aren't cats ever dead and alive for real? I often hear people say that quantum mechanics is a theory only for small things and just doesn't apply to large things like us. But that isn't true. It's really a theory for all things. We know from experience that large things like you and I don't seem to be able to do quantum things. At least I haven't tunneled through any walls recently. But the thing is that the mathematics of quantum mechanics doesn't have any such distinction. This is why Schrödinger was going on about this cat which is both dead and alive. His point was to say that this is one of the consequences of the mathematics of quantum mechanics. These miracles produced by vibration affect everything and are everything. 
It is a very surprising and unsettling thing to find that occult philosophy from 1908 would align perfectly with current physics 116 years ahead of its time. But the ancient worlds of religion and spirituality have always held sound in high regard. Hinduism, Christianity, and Buddhism have all used sound vibration and music is a means to share information and is the idea of God or the universe's will. Some of the core teachings of Hinduism share scripture that is entirely music, while Buddhist monks use sound to reach transcendental states of mind, while the Judeo-Christian and Hermetic philosophy considers God's word as the start of all things. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God and the word was God. This is a quote from the King James Bible. And if I were to rewrite this in a modern way, I would write, in the beginning was the vibration, and the vibration was with the universe, and the vibration was the universe. Om is a symbol representing a sacred sound, syllable, mantra, and an invocation in Hinduism. Its written representation is one of the most important symbols of Hinduism. It is said to be the essence of the supreme absolute consciousness, Atman, Brahman, or the cosmic world. This is Om through water, using the science of cymatics. Now let's get to the magic of all this. Occult practitioners use the belief in spiritual correspondence in vibration to manifest things they wish in reality. It goes like this. The practitioner imagines a desired reality and regularly dreams and thinks of this reality. The dream or thought vibrates in the mental and spiritual realm. Because of correspondence, physical reality starts to present itself as a mirrored frequency in pockets of reality in the image of whatever the practitioner dreams. These are choices presented to us, representing a new path or frequency that matches what we want or is close enough. These examples include getting new jobs, getting in and out of relationships, sacrificing time to study or develop skills working out, and eating well. This is where the effort comes in, because in order to harmonize with the new reality, parts of our old spiritual vibration have to die. We have to change, and this change is often painful. Comfort is our system telling us we don't want to change, keep things this way. And then, eventually, the vibe gets big enough that you are the vibration that you have been dreaming of, and everything in your life becomes part of the vibration that you were initially dreaming. So in essence, it's a real complicated way of saying that if you want something, you should think about it, dream about it, and act on the behaviors that will help it manifest. Who really knows, though? This kind of thinking probably hasn't helped anyone. Yep, no people seem to come to mind. Dare to dream, my friends. They just might come true. <laughs>